this is Cheryl from GMI Hub. I am so glad that you're here to join us on GMI Hub Online. I know it's been a while, but hey, I'm so glad you're here with us. We are, I am so excited uh, that we have another artist that we are going to be interviewing today. Um, you are going to be so thrilled to get to know her. But before I introduce her, I want to remind you that if this is your first time watching GMI Hub Online, thank you so much for taking the time to join us. I'd encourage you to hit the like button as well as the little bell. And here's the reason why. We just want to um, let you have the first opportunity to be aware of any time that we are putting something on here. We have interviews, we have panel discussions, we have sometimes artist showcases, and we just want you to be one of the first to know about it. So that's right, hit the bell, you heard the little bell, and the subscribe button. If you want to know about GMI Hub, definitely go to gmihub.ca. Here's where you'll find out a little bit more about what we're all about. Um, and you will see some of the projects that we are doing, some of our endeavors to help encourage and build the uh, gospel music scene. I say build, encourage. We just want to help strengthen it. That's what we're trying to do. Um, you can also follow us on social medias. We are on Facebook, we are on TikTok, we are on X, we are on Instagram. I'm trying to remember them all. Um, at GMI Hub, except for on X, we are at Industry Gospel. So I think I've covered it all. Dell would be so proud of me. <laughs> but um, now, without further ado, I'd love to introduce to you our guest today is a Canadian our guest today is a Canadian artist she is an emerging uh, singer songwriter worship artist as well as indie artist uh, if you were to hear her music you would hear her heart through her voice her heart's desire is for people to experience the love of God whether they're inside the church or outside the church walls the person I'm speaking about is Alicia Ike Alicia Welcome to GMI Hub Online. Thank you. I'm excited to be here. <laughs> We're excited to have you. Now, Alicia, uh, I, I need to find this out, like um, your background. Tell us a little <laughs> bit more of where you're here, where you're coming, calling in from, and how you got started in this music scene. Uh, it's a really long story, so I'll try and shorten it for you. Um, but I am from Brantford, Ontario, and I was born here and I still live here. Um, so my family and I, um, I grew up at Circle Square Ranch. I don't know if uh, you know that ministry, um, but I grew up there uh, just very much in a, I would say, a very kingdom minded home. Uh, my parents were camp directors. My mom was a songwriter and a worship leader, still is. Um, and so I very much just grew up watching them use their gifts, use what they love doing um, to serve the kingdom of God. And so for me, I i mean, I just, as a kid, I always wanted to be a singer. That's all I've ever wanted to do. Um, my siblings would make fun of me that I sang more than I talked. Um, and I'm sure I annoyed them. <laughs> but I, uh, yeah, I'm the youngest of five kids. And, and so it was just honestly such a good upbringing. My parents then became pastors when I was a teenager. So I entered kind of the world of, of just diving into church more as a teenager um, and just really being able to start leading worship and get involved in youth. And, um, and that's really where I feel like a heart for just singing and using my gifts to somehow bless other people or to somehow um, just help them experience God's presence more. Um, it just became very real for me. And so as I've been, you know, on that journey, it's, it's changed in some ways, but not really like, I, you know, I'm a mom of four kids. I have a lot going on in my life, but like the joy that I find still as I did as a teenager in when I sit down and just sing to God at the piano or I'm leading worship at church or playing at a show. Um, it, it hasn't really changed for me. It's something that I feel 
very called to and always have. So, um, yeah, so that's like very much in a nutshell where I come from and, and my background. You Uh sound like you have the heart, definitely have the heart of a worshiper. Definitely. As in, you know, when, when thinking about what worship is all about and praise is all about Lily, it, it is about pointing people to God. It is. And it sounds like that's your, that's your heart. That's your goal is Mm -hmm. through whatever song that comes, it just to point people to God. Now, when you, you, you mentioned that you've been leading worship, when did the songwriting part happen for you? Was it during leading worship or was that just another experience altogether? Um, that was, I would say it's both actually. Um, the first song I wrote, I was 12. Um, and I, I had a really good friend that loved to sing as well. And I remember we wrote this little song. I can still remember it. Um, I think it was, I want you, I need you Lord, take my life and lead me on. Like I I, I can remember the chorus of it, which is funny. Um, but it was one of these (laughs) things where I, I wrote down something and was given opportunity to sing it at church. And, um, something really shifted for me is that I don't have to sing somebody else's song. I can sing my own, like my own heart, what I want to say to God. And, um, Mm -hmm. and so, yeah, I guess like as a 12 year old, that was where I really started diving more into writing. Um, Mm -hmm. And then after high school, I did a DTS with YWAM uh, in New Zealand for half a year and it was all on worship and writing. And so I was able to, that was really where I felt like God met me and just said, like, I have things I want you to say, and I want you to sing. And so I was able Mm -hmm. to just spend, leave my life, you know, and go and focus. Uh, and that's where I started writing a bunch of songs. I had a journal full of songs. And I think the following year I came home and recorded my first EP. So that was, that's kind of where it started for me is just really understanding that like, I actually have um, words and a sound that God wants to use. And I think, yeah, it's an interesting, it, it, it was, it's just always been very natural for me to do that. That's wonderful. Like, that's just like, <laughs> God imparted, you have a new song. He he imparted a new song in your heart to share with others. I love what you said of like, when you said that, it was like, uh, you know, I almost want to take that little clip it and just keep repeating that part. You know, that's Mm -hmm. the the pivotal point is knowing that God, you can sing from your heart, sing what you want to say to God, which is beautiful. I love that. I love that. Um, So you're... Like it, it's hard to go technical on this because I go, it sounds to me like, <laughs> you know, you just, uh, do you, you play guitar? It looks like, do you play any other instruments? Yep. I see piano yeah, behind um, you as well. Yeah, I play, I mostly play keyboard and piano. Um, and then I do play mm-hmm. guitar as well. Um, yeah. So those are the two things that I, I dive into mostly when, and if I lead worship, I usually lead with the keyboard. So, okay. Yeah. And, and similarly, when you lead, when, so when the songwriting happens, does that happen more on the keyboard side or with the guitar side? Like when you're, or does it, it doesn't matter. It's just when God says, okay, I want the song for you. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> I think um, the keyboard is definitely where I feel the most like at home. So often mm-hmm. that's when it's happened for me is like just playing and I'm just sitting and playing for fun. And then I feel like sometimes God will give me a line. Um, but often it's for me actually often is when I'm journaling. Um, that's where things start for me often is just writing in my journal. I feel like God speaks to me very well and very clearly. And then the music side, often I kind of take that journal and then go and sit Mm -hmm. at the piano and just see what comes out. So that's, um, that's part of my process. Sometimes I've had, uh, times where I've you know, been at a worship night singing or leading someone else's song and there's an instrumental time or a prayer time. And I just feel like God gives me a line to sing and that songs have come out of that for me. So some, I don't necessarily have one path that I take often, but, but, Mm -hmm. uh, those two scenarios are probably the most often for me, how, how songs kind of come about. Do you write songs 
for church congregations to sing? Like, what do you find that when you, uh, first of all, I should ask if you had opportunity to actually sing the songs in your church, which I think you said when you were 12, you were able to, um, Mm -hmm. and did you find the congregation grabbed onto it and were singing that with you? Um, and if so, is that something that's been inspiring you as well? Just continue writing for worship and so forth. Yeah. Um, I I would say at different seasons in my life, I've had more opportunity than others. Um, Growing up, when I was a kid, it was more like special music, you know, sharing your heart. Uh, And that wasn't really, you know, I didn't write songs necessarily for the church. They were more just songs for me. Um, Mm -hmm. And then as a young adult through my 20s, I was very involved at a church here in Brantford um, and very involved in leading. And the culture for a while there was that we wanted to sing our own songs um, in the service. And so that actually really launched me into being more bold about writing for the church. Um, But Mm -hmm. I've always written personally. And so some of my older music, if you listen to it, um, it was music I played more at like cafes and like more secular situations. So sometimes uh, in my life, I feel like it's kind of, there's seasons that I feel called to write for the church. Then there's seasons that it's more personal just for me or for somebody, you know, maybe I call it like Monday to Saturday faith (laughs) songs. Yes. (laughs) And, And then there's like, there's like Sunday songs. So, you know, and I think we need all of that. So yes. yeah. So I, <laughs> I think right now in my life, I am less worried about who this is for and just going, God, what song do you want me to do? And it's not always cohesive. And I'm okay with that. Actually, I like in my in just where I'm at right now, I just feel like I want to, if it's a song that's very personal, and maybe not one that the church is gonna sing that's okay. Mm -hmm. And if it is a song that I feel like is for Christians specifically to sing and declare, that's also awesome. So yeah, I've always been conflicted in myself (laughs) as far as like, I don't feel like I'm just a worship leader. I'm also a music minister and that is something that's different. I feel like, so yeah. Yeah, no, that that's beautiful. I I totally concur with that. Totally concur with that. I feel the same way about mm-hmm. about music and art. Like it's just, I I'm not on worship teams right now, but when I was, I was I was just like you. Just I'm here to be the vessel through which, um, you know, we're pointing to God, and I'm the minister of the music, pointing yes. to God, pointing people to God, not not to me, mm-hmm. but to Him. Yeah, you know. Yeah. So I feel the same exactly the way you feel. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Tell us about um, the latest music, like your latest original music. Mm-hmm. Tell us about the latest originals that you've done. So probably there's three specific songs that have been um, released in the past, uh, I would say half a year, um, that have been so special to be a part of. Um, and I'll kind of preface it by saying like, this is the first time in my life I've really dove into trying to collaborate with other people in music. Um, Mm. I've, I've kept it very personal and very, um, almost private in a sense, like writing by myself, recording with my brother, very, you know, in my circle. And, um, Mm -hmm. So my my most recent music has been more collaborative, which I've really loved doing. So my the a few months ago I released a song called Back to Jesus uh with mm-hmm. Kay Anthony and Lloyd Nix. And that was something Kay Anthony and I met uh at the GMA Awards and just kind of hit it off. And we both were like, Hey, I like your music. He liked my music. So we thought, let's write a song. <laughs> so that was a song wow. that we <laughs> Yeah, so we started writing that. And honestly, from writing to finishing it, it was almost a year long process um, because we don't live in the same area. And yeah, it was a lot. We both have families, you know, we're busy. So that was really fun. And then he actually brought Lloyd Nix into the deal when we were writing it because we, uh, Lloyd is an amazing songwriter and 
he just we were stumped in this one spot and he just kind of took it to the direction that it came to and and so it was really fun putting that song out with those guys um i would love to sing it live sometime at some point because we we recorded <laughs> it all in different places so we've mm -hmm. never actually sung it like together so um and then after that i actually re released a song called the end of it all and that song was actually one that lloyd nix wrote with um, some people in his church uh, and normally oh, I don't sing yeah I don't normally sing other people's music I'm I'm a songwriter I love writing and I usually sing my own music um, but he sent that song to me while we were writing back to Jesus he just said I think this song would really suit you and mm -hmm. I remember listening to it and just just loving just loving how real and raw and honest that song is and it felt like yeah. me, it just, and I couldn't get it out of my head for uh, months. And finally I was like, wow. Lloyd, do you care? I'm going to record it. So um, <laughs> he was grace, gracious enough to let me record it. And that song came out not long ago. And then my most recent one has been with Brooke Nichols, who, um, you know, I go way back with her, actually. Uh, her husband I went to high school with. We kind of have known each other. We lived in the similar area, uh, mm -hmm. you know, for over a decade. And we've never actually written together or sung together, um, just different worlds mm -hmm. kind of colliding. So um, I wrote a chorus actually back in when we were in lockdown with COVID, from COVID um, for my church. I wrote this little chorus that goes uh, with Be Down My Vision, the old hymn. And I've always loved it. And my church sang it for years. Uh, my parents' church sings it. One of these songs that I feel like has caught on on its own, like without somebody recording it. And so finally I was like, you know what, I need to record this. And Brooke, I know she loves the church and she loves um, older songs often. And she's just someone that I thought of and I'm so gracious. Like she was gracious enough to record it with me and I love it. It's, it's such a beautiful song. Um, and so that's the most recent one that I've, I've put out. So it's been really fun to just connect with other Canadian artists, um, see, you know, ministry in music does not have to be a competition and it doesn't have to be singular. Um, and it's been so fun to just be more vulnerable with my gifts and, um, yeah, just, I, I feel like artists more and more are like, Hey, let's, we're better together. So let's just do it together. And I think that that's how God's designed it. And it's really awesome. So those are the kind of the three songs over the, you know, the summer to now that have uh, yeah. been released. Beautiful. I love it. I like what you said is better together. And it's funny. Uh, I, I saw that on a television show too. Oh, no, actually it was a television series where um, this group of people were basically saying, you know, we, we are, we, we're in a war and, originally their civil war if you want to call it was amongst themselves and they were always yeah. divided but when they came together they said we we're better together and it was interesting when they decided to band together against yeah. the enemy of, of the show that's when the victory came right yeah and it's the same musically like i love what you said like you, when artists are now coming together hey let's work together let's collab and i was going to ask you about yeah. that but now you've answered that one <laughs> now i was like it's better <laughs> it's better to just to to come together to collaborate because you know that's how that is how god designed us we we weren't yeah. meant to be apart we're meant to work together you know mm -hmm. and and together bigger, better, beautiful things come about. So I love yeah. that. I love that so much. Um, so um, what do you do when you're not making music? What are your, <laughs> some, some hobbies? <laughs> so for me, I mean, my main 90% of my life, I'm a mom. I have four young kids, uh, twin two-year-old girls. And oh, uh, yeah, <laughs> yes, I did. Um, and so they're really busy and really fun. Um, we're potty training right now. So that's a lot. <laughs> but oh, um, wow. and, yeah, and then I have a, a six, almost seven year old girl and a nine year old boy. So we, you know, most of my life is, is built of cooking, cleaning, taking care of kids. Um, and then for fun, you know, music is my my outlet outside of the home, which has been so great for me. 
Um, but some of my hobbies, like things that I just like that really refresh me, um, they sound like a grandma, but that's, <laughs> I like to bake. <laughs> I love baking. I love reading and I, um, I love just gardening, like being out in my garden. So I, I definitely find, um, I'm kind of an extrovert introvert, like music is my space to really connect with other people, get outside, you know, meet new people, share my heart. Um, but then I mm -hmm. love just like solitary, um, just being in my garden and getting dirty and <laughs> doing stuff like that so yeah so my my <laughs> life is it's a mixture of very different things um and and having four young kids while trying to uh stay inspired in art is very hard like I mean you talk to anyone that's trying to do that it's very hard um but I feel like God's also given me like grace for it in seasons where I've just stepped back and been okay with that you know I, I had m many years where I didn't do any music and didn't write um, yeah. but now I feel like he's kind of like, all right, like you've got, you've got something in you like that needs to come out now. Um, back when I did my album, that was before I had my twins and I really felt like God said, I want you to do this. And mm -hmm. now is the time. And it was during COVID. It was a horrible time to release an album. <laughs> like right. it really, it wasn't <laughs> nothing. Like I couldn't tour. I couldn't, I couldn't do anything really with it, but it was for me and it was because God told me to and actually mostly that album is for my kids like I just wanted them to hear my voice and my heart and have it on on something that they could listen to when they're old and I'm not here um yeah and so so yeah it's been there's been seasons of of different hobbies I guess or different things for me in my life um yeah <laughs> I'm really curious because you mentioned your kids and your family because you have a, a brother that produces, you have your mm -hmm. four kids and like, how does your family, uh, um, what's the support like family wise? Like do the kids, do the kids that they go, mommy singing and like, hey, mommy, <laughs> you know, kind of thing and cheer you on or is it, you know, uh, um, you know, your brother, of course, will like, come on, let's get this, let's get this recorded. Yeah. You know, like what, what is that dynamic like in the family with you and music and, and all of that? Yeah. Um, it's been so I, I have more support than most people do within my family. Mm -hmm. Um, I have, I'm one of five kids and all of us have kids and all of us have been involved in ministry of some sort, pretty much. Mm -hmm. Um, and so my brother has been, uh, he's been my sidekick, like me and him, when he was doing more of his own music, I often played keys for him and, you know, backed him up when he was leading worship. Um, and then he also has always been my go-to for just, he's so creative and brings a whole element that I just don't have. Um, and so I always tell him he makes me sound cool and <laughs> like way cooler than I am. <laughs> uh, but yeah, and so he's an incredible musician and always has been. So growing up, you know, we were always involved. We did youth stuff together. Um, my older sister Nadine and her husband led worship for years and were worship pastors as well. Um, wow. And you know, my other two siblings also like sang. My brother, my other brother played bass. Like we were kind of like the music family. So, um, <laughs> except me. except I my family. dad. <laughs> so yeah, so they understand uh, to a level I don't have to really explain, which is really helpful. If I need help with the mm -hmm. kids, you know, my mom and my parents are so supportive. My husband, he's not a musician. He actually is a tattoo artist. He, so he's an oh, artist wow. in a different, in a different, in a different uh, genre. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> um, but, but he's been so supportive. You know, if I go and play somewhere like he'll watch the kids or come and and they'll just be there and and my kids often especially my two-year-olds will ask to play mummy and wants to you know listen to me which i it's just funny to Aww. see them just love that so it's it's fun for me to just you know it is a sacrifice and anyone that has a family trying to do a career outside of that especially women i would say it's it's it is it takes a village it liter literally takes a village to be able to do this so you know even now doing this interview my mom is here 
watching my twins. So it, it nice. is, um, it's, I'm very humbled and feel very lucky to have so much support. Um, but they also love God and have a huge heart for the kingdom of God. And so if one of us mm -hmm. feels like we need to do something there, they will help in the best way that they can. So, yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Mm. That's beautiful. You got to meet your kids one day. <laughs> yeah, they're very cute. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, let's talk live performances. Do you do mm -hmm. a lot of live performances? I, like I, I obviously you do the church, but outside of the church mm -hmm. as well, have you done a lot of live performances? Um, I used to more um, mm -hmm. uh, a little while ago. Um, I'm kind of stepping back into that like just now, okay. actually, just, you know, I had my twins and I kind of just took a break. And um, so, yeah, I, but before when I was, I would say young twenties, I did a lot of like conferences, you know, music while people are eating dinner, restaurants, coffee mm -hmm. houses, that kind of scene, um, you know, or at different youth conferences, maybe not leading worship, doing more of the like side stage stuff. So that was, that was my, that was really fun for me. And then over the past, I would say maybe eight years, it's mostly been leading worship. So I do go to churches quite often um, as a guest worship leader um, okay. and and do that. Um, and then I would love to, like, I, I absolutely love going to new places and just leading people to, it's just, it's always, I love it when new people come and lead worship in my life, you know, or, mm -hmm. or share their music because it's just it's so inspiring. So I think for me, I love that. I love going to different places and just bringing what I have and meeting new people. And, um, so it's definitely something I would love to do more. And as my kids get older, I know that's going to be kind of a little bit more doable <laughs> for me in my mm -hmm. life. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it's definitely love. I think any opportunity to, to see people come together to just either listen to great music that glorifies God or to participate in it is so exciting for me. So absolutely love it. There is, there's nothing like live music. I, I yes. it is, it is just so wonderful and I'm very honored that I get to do that. That's awesome. What's the most memorable interaction you've had with, um, well, I guess it could be a two-part question. Memorable mm -hmm. interaction you've had with another artist and most memorable interaction you've had with, I don't want to say a fan, but a, a, a person that's consuming your music. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> I've had, I've had different times, you know, where people have have really come up to me and 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 said like you know this song really spoke to me um but one of the biggest i remember this one time um and we could call it a fan or a <laughs> person that was listening to me i don't know um but we a music enthusiast <laughs> yeah i i actually can't i can't even put my finger on where i was but i was i think it was a church i'm gonna say london and it was, I didn't know anyone. And I got asked to lead worship at, uh, it was a women's conference. And um, I remember just singing and feeling, feeling God give me this like um, strength in my voice that I hadn't really experienced before. And um, I was feeling really awful. Actually, I think my husband and I had like a really big fight right before I went to this conference. And I just wasn't oh, wow. feeling... Yeah, I just, I wasn't feeling enough. I, I didn't feel mm -hmm. like I had much to offer. Um, and I remember God mm -hmm. just speaking to me, like, I brought you here and like, it's in my strength that you do this, not in your own. And I remember mm -hmm. singing, <clears throat> what's the song by Carrie Job? Oh, I'm gonna, I can't remember the title. Anyway, singing this song forever? and feeling, yes, forever. Um, mm -hmm. And I remember getting this strength that I, I just felt like God um, filled me and I was able to give where I didn't really have much to give. 
And afterwards, there was a girl there that I could see it. She was just bawling the whole song. Yeah. And um, she came up to me and she said, while I was singing, she felt heat go down her back. And she felt like the wow. Lord touched her back and healed her. And that was, and she said, I wasn't asking for him to do that. It just happened. And it kind of took her off guard. And um, mm -hmm. it, it really showed me those are the things i guess so I, it's not really a fan but it it's yeah. that's why that's why it's i do memorable. music yeah it's it yes. stuck out to me because sometimes i do wonder why am i doing this what why yeah. like who who do i think i am that i have something to offer and god always reminds me of that like you don't have anything to offer <laughs> like i do <laughs> and yes i'm the, you know i'm the one i'm the one that gives you the strength and can, and when you're obedient, I can move through you in a way that mm -hmm. is powerful. And it does touch people and it does minister to people. And so that was really memorable for me. Um, and then as far as another artist goes, oh, that's a hard one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, that's a really hard one. Yeah. I, I would well, say there's just so many. Um, honestly, there's a lot of amazing artists in Canada specifically that I've been able to lead worship with. When I was younger, I was able to play keys for a few different people and be involved that way. Um, and I, I would say this and my brother, if he listens to this, he's going to like be embarrassed, but, but honestly, so my brother's name is Timothy Mann. He put out some music mm -hmm. a long time ago, but he does mostly instrumental music now for film and, stuff but um the most memorable time i have had has been leading worship with him um mm. i remember back at overflow in kitchener and we were part yeah. of the house band and um i remember just seeing such humility in him in a wow. setting where it's easy mm. to not be humble because you've got thousands and thousands of kids you know looking at you and mm -hmm. thinking you're the coolest and all of these things. Um, it's easy, yes. it's easy to get a high off of that. And, um, he has been such an example of somebody that just serves God and it's not about him. And that's been, so mm -hmm. working with him, there is something very special about working with family when it can be good. Um, I mean, you yes. work with your husband and I, I, I think that yes. there's an element that's very powerful when, when family can function together that way. Mm -hmm. So it's not a bigger artist, but for me, uh, he's, I've always looked up to him. So working with him in the studio and over the years has been the highlight for me musically yeah. for sure. Beautiful. That's beautiful. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I, I love the example of examples you've given because you're right. Um, my husband and I work together and, and it's interesting because, um, I'd be the person that'd be like you, I'd, I'd be sort of the person on stage, you know, mm -hmm. I'm the singer, but he's the person that does everything else technically. Yeah. And through that interaction, we have, uh, I've gained a real appreciation for what he does and for the people he works with and what they do, yeah. because it was a, it was a world I never understood. I never knew. And, but he introduced yeah. me to that world and it's like, wow. And to mm -hmm. know that they serve like this, it's amazing, right? Yeah. And and like yourself, you know, the different families that like you have a generational thing happening because you have your parents mm -hmm. that were worship leaders, then you, possibly your beautiful twins and kids will probably do yeah. something like that too. <laughs> so, yeah. I mean, what a legacy that could lead, yeah. right? That would be just, yeah. that's just awesome. I don't know if they're really showing that, but it's like, what an awesome legacy that would yeah. be for them, you know? Yeah. Um, if you could collaborate with any other artists, you've collaborated with a number of artists, okay? Mm -hmm. Kay Anthony, uh, Lloyd, did you say Lloyd? I, I Lloyd Nix, yeah. <laughs> Lloyd Nix, Nope, you yes. got it right. Lloyd yep. Nix, yeah, okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, Brooke Nichols, you know, and there's probably, a, that, are there any other artists that, that you haven't collaborated yes, yet, collaborated with yet that you would like to collaborate with if you had that opportunity? Yeah. the sky's the um, limit <laughs> oh man uh, if, 
I mean, if I could, if the sky was the limit, um, I would love to write and sing with Rita Springer. Um, nice. she's some, mm -hmm. she's somebody that has just inspired me so much over the years. Um, and like, when I think of like, I want to, I want to sing with this person. They're usually people from me growing up that I looked up to, you know, Darlene Check. Um, these mm -hmm. women that have been so bold for the kingdom of God, um, Brooke, Brooke Lidgertwood, she was huge for mm -hmm. me um, growing up. She was singing secular music and leading worship and showed me, oh, you can do both. And that was something mm -hmm. I really hadn't seen before. You know, most Christians were, mm -hmm. you know, you if you're a Christian, you should be singing Christian music. And she was doing both. And that was something that was like, it blew my brain and it also inspired me to do that. So I started writing and playing mm. in places that were not the church and I loved it. Um, and so, and also was leading worship at the same time and that was okay. <laughs> um, yes, so, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so those women for sure, those women are like Darlene Check, Brooke Ledgerwood and Rita Springer. There we go. I don't nice. know if it will ever happen. Nice. <laughs> but that would be amazing. <laughs> You're allowed to dream. God can do yeah. anything. <laughs> yeah, I know. <sighs> um, do you have an all-time favorite album or song? Oh, uh, that changes for me all the time. Um, oh, does but, it? <laughs> yeah. Um, my favorite song right now is by Jess Ray. Uh, mm -hmm. she's an artist in Nashville. Um, and she has this song called the runaway and I have listened to that song. Oh my gosh. I don't even know how many times this summer and it's just, oh, it's wow. just been so good. It's exceptional and beautiful. And that's my favorite song right now. I would say, um, mm -hmm. favorite album of all time. That's such a big commitment, but, um, <laughs> Again, my uh, my musical taste goes all over the place, but I would say one of my top <laughs> albums that I go to and want to listen to um, is Tapestry. Um, oh. it, I know that's interesting, um, <laughs> but yeah, and I'm trying to think what else. There's, it's really hard to narrow that down. Um, yeah. It's eclectic. But yeah, Je it's eclectic. I would say, yeah, Carol King to Jess Ray, very different. Yeah, um, wow. <laughs> but, yeah, but Jess Ray right now has been very inspiring. I think her music is thoughtful and simple. And I really, I think mm -hmm. growing up in a very, like, music was very busy, electronic, like, huge band, huge light. You know, I grew up on, like, Hillsong and, and um, yeah. Be you know Bethel and I love that still but I've loved mm -hmm. how just simple and honest her Jess Ray's music is and I that's been mm -hmm. she's been my go-to artist this summer for sure awesome yeah awesome mm -hmm. I, I know we focus more on the worship side and I didn't really touch on the as you say the secular side so I'm going to take a minute to 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 kind of go on to that side um mm -hmm. you write music for the secular as well like for the I'll say the for outside the church walls yes or no yes um yes and no <laughs> I I no, okay <laughs> no um if you look like if you go onto my Spotify or whatever and you go back a number of years um I have an EP on there that's called three and those songs mm -hmm. were written mostly out of um, life experiences. They don't necessarily talk about God per se, um, but they were mm -hmm. honest to my situation. And so I, right. I felt like at the time God say like, write about issues that you've struggled with and bring my truth to it. And so mm -hmm. sometimes songs for me have been medicine, like just to write out, you know, one of the songs on there, like I got, it was a breakup that I went through. Like I wasn't married at the time oh, and, gosh. you yeah. know, and just writing about how there's risk in love and is that worth it? Is it like, and so, so some of these things I would, I would write more with a perspective of still bringing truth, like the truth of God that you're worth, you know, that like mm -hmm. I would bring that in, but not necessarily, um, boldly say who I was talking about. Um, 
And right, so some of, right. I, I really appreciate writing that can be shared in a secular way with people that don't know God. Um, and it's been cool, just some of the opportunities of places at the time that I was able to play or meet people that I wouldn't have if I was doing specifically corporate worship music. Um, mm -hmm. The song, so even the song, the end of it, the end of it all that I released um, not long ago is not, it's definitely not a corporate church worship mm -hmm. song. Um, it's just an honest song. And so I think there are some, some music that I write again, I haven't necessarily stuck to one genre, which I know as an artist, that's like a no, no, <laughs> you should, <laughs> um, <laughs> You know, you should really like create a sound and a name for yourself that is consistent. But for me, um, that's just changed so much. When I was single and didn't have kids, I, I loved playing at, um, you know, more secular places. It was just, it was life to me. I loved being able to be light, light in those places. And so you can't get mm -hmm. up there and sing back to Jesus. <laughs> so, right, um, right. <laughs> Yeah, but now, you know, I'm I'm a mom of four. I'm mostly involved in, in church atmosphere. And so sometimes the songs that come to me are more uh, for somebody that already does know Christ. And so yeah. I think um, right now, actually, the music that's coming to me when I sit down to write is I know so many people um, since I would say COVID happened mm -hmm. that have lost their faith. Um, that have yeah. struggled with doubt, um, questioning religion, questioning God, questioning everything. Mm -hmm. And um, mm -hmm. my heart has broken for them. And so I, that is something when I sit down to write, it's less about, again, Back to Jesus was a song that was specifically like about Jesus, but pointing people back to him like those that have struggled mm -hmm. in their faith those that have are are don't even know if they believe like just mm -hmm. simplifying it going back to the basics and so that's my heart right now is to encourage people to meet with him and you know the thousands of questions that we have and doubts it's not that those aren't valid but yeah i think my heart is to point people just to him and to know that it's okay to have questions but it doesn't have to determine whether you believe or not. And so, yeah, it's been, so, so some of my music you listen to, and it definitely, um, so my, my maiden name was Alicia Mann. And so I actually had mm -hmm. music I put out before I was married that was okay. more secular. <laughs> so that, right. that was kind of like an older chapter now coming into it. I'm, I am very bold about my faith. Um, my music clearly <laughs> talks about Christ, um, mm -hmm. but definitely not all of it is suited for the church to sing on a Sunday. It's more right. devotional. Maybe devotional music might be the better word. <laughs> right. So, right. Mm -hmm. Awesome. What are your future plans for your music? Well, um, I'm asking all the hard questions. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they're good questions. Um, my future plans. So I actually would love to do another album. And so I'm actually working towards that. So the songs that I previously mm -hmm. put out this summer um, are kind of stepping stones to um, hopefully a full album. So that is, again, it costs a lot of money and it's a lot of time. And so I have songs. It's more, um, I just felt like God said, why don't you just start doing one at a time? And then, yeah. you know, kind of make a plan from there. So right now I've just been asking God, okay, who do you want me to work with? And which songs do you want me to record? And I'm kind of going one at a time. So I would love to do a full album and I would love to do a tour in Canada. That is something, a goal of mine to do. Um, awesome. So yeah, so that's, I'm hoping those things can become more of a reality in the next year. So yeah. Mm -hmm. So awesome. Well, aspiring artists, uh, we have been listening to Alicia Ike, who has just been sharing her heart, sharing her experience as a singer, a songwriter, 
more uh, more so on the worship side you'll hear the heart of worship you go ahead and go to her website it is alicia ike.com where you can hear her music and read up more about her and follow her on social media you are on social media as i presume right yep yep <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, so you can follow her on her social medias as well and hey let her like go ahead listen to her music and and uh you know stream it but add it to your playlists you know let you know just just um uh, encourage what god is doing in and through her and through her family um uh with her music and thank you alicia so much for for being here and sharing your heart um i so identify with what you what you've been talking about mm -hmm. uh with knowing god and and basically being an empty vessel for him so that uh, so that mm -hmm. he can work in and through you to the different audiences that you that mm -hmm. you are called to work with so thank you so much for sharing um and thank, thank you. you for being here on the program don't run away um okay uh, on, <laughs> um, and again, audience, thank you so much for joining us again. Um, please, if you haven't already hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, put some comments down, let us know what you thought about this particular interview. And, uh, again, follow us on social media. We are on Facebook, TikTok. uh, I always meant Instagram. Um, I keep forgetting one. We're here on YouTube <laughs> um, at GMI Hub. And, um, and of course, if you want to learn more about us, go to gmihub.ca. Thanks so much for taking the time to join us. And until next time, have yourself a great day and God bless.